This week we're going to be having a look at another American manufacturer. Uh, we're doing it from the back of my Land Rover, unlike uh, actually on the range like we normally do, because if you have a look outside, it's snowing and there are blizzards coming in every 10-15 minutes, so I'm just trying to get a little bit of shelter in between taking some shots. Anyway, I'm talking about Kimber. Now, Kimber, until a couple of years ago, were a relatively unknown quantity until they started um, being distributed by Riflecraft. Unlike a lot of the other reviews that I've done for the shooting show, this isn't the first time that I've fired a Kimber. In fact, this is the fourth rifle I've had, testing it in various different guises for sporting rifle. So I'm in a position to tell you already that there are a lot of great aspects of this rifle, and I'm going to show you these as we go through this review. Now this particular model is the Kimber Montana 84M. Um, this one's in 243. But it's not just the lightest rifle that Kimber make. This is also the lightest production rifle in the world. At five pounds, six ounces, it really does feel like a feather in the hand. Now, the action that Kimber use is a combination of the Mauser 98 and the Winchester Model 70. But what they've done is they've stripped it down and they've stripped it back to the very minimum tolerances possible for each caliber bracket. And what that leaves is a very, very lightweight yet strong action, and not to mention reliable. So we take a closer look at the Kimber bolt, you can see the, the fixed claw um, extractor. The ejector is a fixed blade which is inside the action. And if you look on the face, you can see the slot where it comes through. Now, unlike a Mauser 98, where the slot for the ejector blade comes actually through the lug itself, this comes through the face of the bolt. And that is the same design that was used in the Winchester Model 70, and is actually stronger than the 98 design. If we flip the bolt round and have a look at the, the rear, you'll see that this is where the safety is attached. Now, it's a, a wing safety, the same as a Model 70, um, except this is three position. Fully rearward is safe, the rifle won't fire, the bolt is locked down. Central position, rifle still won't fire, but you can take the bolt out. And of course, fully forward, and I know that the chamber's empty, the rifle will go off. Now this stock is not just a standard composite stock. It is Kevlar infused, which allows Kimber to make a stock that is both incredibly light and incredibly strong. Now when I say strong, I'm not referring to what I'm normally referring about, which is it is a nice rigid stock where the forend doesn't flex. I mean incredibly strong. If you want to have a look on YouTube at Kimber stock destruction, you will see two guys putting a Kimber rifle through hell, uh, blasting it with SSG from a shotgun and doing all manner of things to it to try and break it. And the Kimber stock holds up without even a crack. And that is to do with the, the Kevlar that is built into the composite. You may think that for such a light rifle, it could be quite abusive to fire, especially in a bigger caliber like a 308. Now, I have actually fired the Kimber Montana in a 308, and I can tell you that it is actually nicer to fire than the wooden stock version. Now, it took me a little while to try and work out why that could possibly be, and the only conclusion I could come to was that it was the Kevlar weave inside the stock actually absorbing some of the recoil that would otherwise be felt and transferred to you through a standard wooden stock. This is definitely one of the most pleasurable rifles that I've fired in a very, very long time. And when I first had a Montana on test, I went through boxes and boxes around just because I was enjoying shooting it so much. Anyway, I digress a little, but let's get this apart so I can show you uh, what is possibly the cleverest part of this rifle. Okay, so that's the action screws out. If I just squeeze here, the stock comes apart. Now, if you have a, a look inside the stock, you can see that it, it's very cleanly molded indeed. There's no overspill like you see in some uh, synthetic stocks. But what is more interesting than that is the fact that there doesn't appear to be any bedding in here. Now, the classic models, which are wooden stock, you can clearly see where the aluminium pillars are and also where the resin bedding is around uh, the rear um, action screw and also around the recoil lug area. You can't see this in the Kimber Montana, but it is in fact there. Now what Kimber have very cleverly done is when they mold this stock, 
they mould it round an exact replica of the action of the rifle that's going to be bedded inside. So that means that from this point here, all the way to about an inch, inch and a half uh, past where the barrel starts, is completely bedded and touching every surface of the metalwork. And they do that without having to add any extra resin. And of course, that, is not o that not only makes it stronger, it is also a weight-saving exercise. Now, pillars. You can't see any pillars in this, but they are there. In fact, if you turn the rifle around, you can see the bottom of the pillars in the stock. Now, these pillars are built into the, the process when the stock is manufactured in the first place. Very clever, and just that little touch from Kimber that lets you know that this is a very, very well thought out rifle. Now, the last thing with the stock is that you will notice there is no magazine here. In fact, there's not even a floor plate. This is a blind magazine. You load each round from the top, you, and then to eject the rounds, you have to semi-chamber them and eject them into your hand. Finally, let's look at the trigger guard. Now, I have to applaud Kimber for this. A lot of manufacturers who go down the process of cutting weight off their designs would look at a trigger guard and say, let's make it synthetic. Kimber haven't done that. What they've done is they've made it stainless steel, the same as the rest of the rifle, and this is the right decision to make. So great job by Kimber on that. Now, let's just put the, the stock to one side and get the metal work back out. Uh, the final thing to talk about before we uh, put the rifle back together and let you see how it shoots is the trigger unit. American manufacturers are not renowned for producing excellent triggers. In fact, they're renowned for producing some pretty rubbish triggers. It have always historically tended to be very heavy, and that's due to legislation in America, and, and because of that, quite creepy and uneven brakes. Uh, I've fired a lot of different Kimbers, and that has not been the case with any of them. In fact, I'd go as far to say is the trigger unit on the Kimber is excellent. It's fully adjustable, and you can see the adjustment screws here. But when the rifles come from Riflecraft, um, certainly judging by the rifles that I've had on test, you probably won't have to adjust them anyway. Um, certainly I've been happy enough to use them as they've come. Finally on the trigger, if you have a close look at the trigger blade, you'll see that it's really quite fat and wide. Uh, it's probably actually the widest trigger blade of any rifle that I've tested. And might not be to some people's taste, but I really do like the nice wide trigger blade on my finger. It's really comfortable and easy to grip and just sit, sits nicely when my hand curves over the pistol grip. Well, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I think the only thing that's really left to do now is put the rifle together and then talk about how it shoots. Well, we've had to cut the range shooting a little bit short today. There's been blizzards coming over the hills this whole day, and we've had to shoot in the gaps between the whiteouts. But fortunately, I've shot a lot of Kimbers before, so I know how well they shoot, and the bottom line is they're excellent. Uh, and this rifle is actually my own. I've decided after shooting them for two years that I had to add one to my armory. And this 243 um, is also a half inch shooter. Today, the conditions were difficult and I was trying 105 grain geckos, which are just a little bit heavy for this rifle. But even still, in these terrible conditions, I'm still able to return decent groups. This one needs a few clicks down. So the bottom line with Kimber is that they have done a brilliant job in modernizing an action that was world renowned and respected. They brought it into the 21st century and they've made a rifle that everybody can enjoy at an affordable level. I really rate them, I enjoy using them and I'm looking forward to hunting over the next few years with my new purchase.